वेलकम बैक टू लिटरेचर गाइड दिस वीडियो कंटेन्स इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द मूवमेंट पोएट्री ऑफ द नाइनटीन फिफ्टीज द मूवमेंट पोएट्स वे आर नीदर अट्रैक्टेड बाय द एक्सपेरिमेंटेशन ऑफ एजरा पाउंड एंड टी एस इलियट नॉर वर दे फैसिनेटेड बाय द रोमांटिक ट्रेडिशन ऑफ द ग्रुप ऑफ डिलेन थॉमस द मूवमेंट पोएट्स एम्फेसाइज क्लैरिटी सिंप्लिसिटी एंड ल्यूसिडिटी ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन इन देअर पोएट्री द वीडियो कंटेन्स इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द ग्रुप ऑफ द मूवमेंट पोएट्स एंड द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ मूवमेंट पोएट्री ऑफ द नाइनटीन फिफ्टीज दिस माइट बी माई लास्ट वीडियो ऑन द टॉपिक about literary schools and movements in english literature if you really like the content produced by this channel do like and subscribe literature guide you can also visit the website the link of the website is there on the screen you can visit this website and search useful content there on this website i don't want to waste your time let's dive into a video and enjoy the video movement poetry in literature the term movement denotes a new development or epoch in literary activity or interest of some specific period The movement poetry was a new development in the arena of literature which showed its detestation for the established norms in literature of the 1950s. It was not a literary school of poets as such but a loose group of poets of the 1950s. The term movement poetry was coined by J.D. Scott in 1954 who was the editor of a periodical named Spectator which heralded the birth of a new trend in poetry of the 1950s. The literature of the 1950s was a reflection of pain, sufferings, frustration, class struggle and anger of common man. It was not a literature of an elite class but of a lower middle class of society. The movement poets depicted the life in provincial region of the period. The movement poetry neither influenced by the spell of Thomas Stearns Eliot and Ezra Pound nor fascinated by the high emotion and verbal effusion of Dylan Thomas. The movement poets rejected not only the romantic tradition but also the experimentation of the modernist poets. It lacked spontaneity of expression and outburst of feelings and emotion. It appealed more to the head than to the heart of the reader. It was a group of poets who were realist, robust and skeptical in their view. The movement poets gave vent to their pent-up feelings in ironic tone. Realism is the keynote of the movement poetry which sometimes makes their poetry dull, boring, and dry. The movement poets saw the world as materialistic, banal and evil. They did not lament over the loss of glory and weep for the horror of the two world wars and show boredom like Tiresias in T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland. They believed in facing reality and ordeals of life bravely. It is clear that the movement poetry was less sentimental and more intellectual in nature. It was anti-romantic, witty, laconic and ironic in tone. The modernist poetry emphasized a new form, a new way of looking at life, through which the sensibility of the age was to be expressed whereas the movement poetry rejected every principle of the modernist poetry. They showed antipathy to the cultural pretensions of Bloomsbury and elitism of the modern age. They adhere to the traditional metrical forms and syntax. The poets of the 1950s abhorred over-experimentation in form and over-use of figurative language in poetry. They put stress on simplicity and clarity of expression in poetry. Philip Larkin remarked that first of all, you have to be terribly educated, you have to read everything to know these things, and secondly, you have got somehow to work them in to show you are working them in. The movement poets disliked the elusive and mythical nature of T.S. Eliot's poetry which demands greater knowledge and understanding on the part of the reader. It was too complex and difficult to be understood by ordinary man. 
If Eliot's poetry was too complex and unsuitable for the common man, so was the poetry of a group of W. H. Shorden. It is too intellectual and political in sense and gives reflection of the time between the two world wars. The group of the movement poets comprised some famous poets and novelists such as Robert Conquest, Philip Larkin, Kingsley Amis, Donald Davy, Dennis N. Wright, Thomas Gunn, Elizabeth Jennings, John Wayne, John Holloway, Anthony Thwaite, Vernon Scannell, and George Macbeth. Robert Conquest, one of the renowned writers of the movement of the 1950s edited an anthology, New Lines which was published in 1956. It contained the principles and ideology of the movement. It is important to note that Robert Conquest has criticized the obscurity and metaphorical nature of modern poetry in the preface of the anthology New Lines. He considered Dylan Thomas's style as diffuse and sentimental verbiage and pirouettes. The second anthology of movement poetry was titled as the same as, New Lines, it appeared on the literary scene in 1963. Robert Conquest produced several collections of poetry, they are poems published in 1955, Between Mars and Venus in 1962, Arias for a Love Opera in 1969, and New and Collected Poems in 1988. Robert Conquest poetry dealt with the pain, disillusion, frustration and suffering of man of the prevalent period. There is a fine blending of colloquial speech and irony in his poetry which vividly present hollowness and hypocrisy of modern age. In his poetry, Robert Conquest has depicted man as an integral part of nature. The tone of his poetry is intellectual rather than emotional and sentimental. Philip Larkin, one of the chief pillars of the movement poetry, expressed his abhorrence and dislike for figurative language and experimentation in modern poetry. When a number of modern poets were under the spell of Thomas Stearns Eliot and Ezra Pound in the first half of the 20th century, Philip Larkin was not much influenced by their experimentation. He emphasized use of traditional metrical forms, precision and plain diction in poetry rather than experimentation in poetry. He expressed his detestation of Mozart, and he had little faith in myth-making trend and elusive nature of the modern poetry. Philip Larkin's first collection of poetry The North Shore appeared in 1945 which clearly indicates influence of William Butler Yeats. Another volume 20 poems appeared on the literary scene in 1951. But his most famous collection of poetry The Less Deceived published in 1955 earned name and fame for the poet. Some of Philip Larkin's poems are filled with pessimism and grim humor which clearly indicates that he was under the influence of Thomas Hardy. Philip Larkin's collection of poems The Less Deceived was followed by another two volumes named, The Wits and Weddings in 1964 and High Windows in 1974. The sharp and bitter tone of his poetry clearly indicates his alliance with the movement poetry of the 1950s. The titles of Elizabeth Jennings' collection of poems A Way of Looking and A Sense of the World reflected the principles of the movement poetry of 1950s. The two volumes vividly indicate a new and different way of perceiving and experiencing the world. Though the two volumes A Way of Looking published in 1955 and A Sense of the World published in 1958 are tinged with the features of the movement poetry. Many of Elizabeth Jennings' later works are highly personal and confessional in tone. The poems of the two collections appeared in Robert Conquest's anthology, New Lines in 1956. Kingsley Amis, a poet and famous novelist, was also associated with the group of movement poets. In his novel Lucky Jim, Kingsley Amis has introduced a hero, Jim Dixon who is against the established values pretensions, and elite art and craft with rebellious attitude. Jim Dixon expresses his anger, frustration, alienation and disillusionment in sardonic vein with grim humor in the novel. Jim Dixon is a representative of the angry young men and he belongs to the lower middle class of society. Kingsley Amos's collections Bright November appeared in 1947, and A Frame of Mind in 1953, clearly indicate revolutionary ideas of the movement poetry. 
Kingsley Amos hid in the poets of the 1950s, nobody wants any more poems about philosophers or paintings or novelists or art galleries or mythology or foreign cities or other poems. He objected to Dylan Thomas' style and asserted that Dylan Thomas should have stuck to spewing beer, not ink. As a member of the movement, Kingsley Amos has expressed conservative taste and hostility to contemporary manners. His volume of poems collected poems 1944-1979 appeared on the literary scene in 1979. Thomas Gunn's poetry can be deemed as the meeting point of the American Beat Movement and the English Movement poetry. He was greatly influenced by a critic, Eva Winters. Thomas Gunn's first volume of poetry Fighting Terms appeared in 1954 which established him in the literary arena of poetry. The second volume The Sense of Movement was published in 1957 that clearly displays Eva Winter's influence. Thomas Gunn has skillfully observed rationalistic precision and clarity while handling a subject matter of his poetry. His style resembles with that of John Donne because it demonstrates a fine blending of far-fetched imagery, economy of words, wit and irony. Some other famous works of Thomas Gunn are My Sad Captain published in 1961, Touch in 1967, and Moly published in 1971. Dennis Joe's Enright played vital role in the development of the movement of 1950s. His first volume of poems The Laughing Hyena and Other Poems was published in 1953. Dennis Enright has adroitly handled various themes through his poetry. It is important to note that he produced anthology of the movement poets of the 1950s in 1955 which became a source for the anthology New Lines by Robert Conquest in 1956. Several other collections of poems are bred rather than blossom published in 1956, Addictions in 1962, and Sad Eyes appeared in 1975. It is important to note that Dennis Enright has also composed a series of poems of Faust Book I 1973 which is based on the theme of Faust legend. Some other volumes of poetry under the circumstances appeared in 1991 and Old Man and Comets in 1993. Dennis Enright's poems Laughing Hyena, Some Men Are Brothers and The Old Adam present a precarious condition of common man. In these poems, the poet has expressed his grief and pain along with disgust for man's hardships and sufferings. There is fine use of colloquial speech without pedantry. In the poems, Dennis Enright has given vent to his anger and indignation and criticized hypocrisy and cruelty. Donald Davy, one of the members of the movement, expressed his anti-romantic views and anti-bohemian principles in his famous work Purity of Diction in English Verse, it was published in 1952. He also produced some volumes of poetry Brides of Reason in 1955, A Winter Talent in 1957, Events and Wisdom in 1964 and Essex Poems in 1969. His volume of poems in The Stopping Train appeared in 1972. The reader can find lucidity of expression and pictorial description of landscapes in Donald Davies' poetry. His poems are tinged with speculation and philosophy. The poet is often charged with obscurity and complexity of his verse. Wayne, a famous novelist and critic, was associated with the group of movement poets of the 1950s. Many of his works were published in New Lines. Wayne's poetry lacks warmth of emotion due to his dull and prosaic style of writing. He produced a collection of poems Mixed Feelings in 1951 and Weep Before God in 1961. Though John Wayne's name is linked to the group of angry young men, he himself detested this term. Thus, the movement poetry was a new development in the arena of English poetry of the 1950s which neither followed the path of Ezra Pound nor observed the principles of Dylan Thomas. It adhered to the principle of simplicity, lucidity and clarity of expression of thoughts in poetry which mirrored the life of the lower middle class of 1950s and not of elite class of society. How is the video? I hope you liked the video. I have produced many videos on English poetry, drama, 
novel and criticism you can watch all these videos on this channel literature guide if you really like the content produced by this channel do like and subscribe literature guide the link of the website is there on the screen you can visit the website and get useful information there on the website i will meet you soon with a new and interesting video on english literature meet you please subscribe literature guide